Hi, in this video I will share learnings when it comes to macOS applications and the App Sandbox and how to create an app that manages files in place. I recently developed an app called ShutterScore. This app is built to import folders by the URLs, see their contents and read the pictures inside in order to quickly filter and delete the worst pictures, leaving only the best ones to continue editing them. An App Sandbox defines a safe space for your app to access files with the certainty that those files won't be modified by other apps. In iOS, the Sandbox is very restrictive and the file system is limited as well. Then on iOS, if you want to edit a file, we need to import it to the App Sandbox. That's not what I want to do in my app. I don't want to make copies of the files in the file system, but actually select them and delete the files in place. In macOS, we have a more open model of the OS in general. The App Sandbox is still there, but then the question is, how do I keep using the App Sandbox and edit the files in place? It's important to know that we could potentially disable the Sandbox for the Mac app, but doing so would mean that we cannot distribute the app on the Mac App Store. In some apps, we might need to disable the App Sandbox, but not on this one. To explain how to work with the macOS app sandbox, I made a sample app that can import folders, read and render the images in those folders. I start by importing a folder into the app, and by default, no content is shown. If I go back to Xcode, I can see the console and an error that says the file photoshoot couldn't be open because you don't have the permissions to do it. This is because this folder is outside the sandbox. Uh, now the question is, how do I get permissions to see that folder's contents? One approach we can take is to request permissions for a specific folders. You can do this in the app capabilities section of the project. For example, we can request a read-only permission for the download folder. Once that's set, we can run the app and try to import the folder from the downloads folder. Now we can actually see the contents of the folder. Of course, this approach is not really what we want, because if we try to import a folder like desktop, we won't be able to see those pictures unless we start adding capabilities for each folder. Another approach would be to request for full disk access. There is no API to request this to users. To do so, users need to explicitly go to System Settings, Privacy and Security, Full Disk Access and add your app in there. This approach is not really recommended for most apps, both for needing the user intervention, but also full disk access is not really intended for this kind of app that I'm showing. Finally, the right approach for this situation is to use URL Start Accessing Security Scope Resource. This method will expand the app sandbox to contain the import URL. This works only when we're dealing with URLs that the user gave consent to interact with which is done by either using the file system open file dialog or by using drag and drop into the app. In code, we can add the start access security scope resource method called in the folder build from method. Now we run the app and import a folder that we can actually see the contents of the folder as intended. An important step to do as well is to release the access to the scope resource by calling URL stop accessing security scope resource, as it is mentioned in the documentation. In my case, I do it whenever the view model is initialized. If I run the app again though, the folder is not longer accessible. I get the no permissions errors again. That's because this method works only in the current session. To fix that, we need to use another mechanism called the bookmark data. We can store the fact that the user explicitly gave permissions to the folder when we import it. We can create a method like that gets the bookmark data with the security scope parameter and we store the result in user defaults, for example. Now that we have the bookmark data in the user defaults, we can call this method when building a folder from a URL. Then the next step is when launching the app again, Instead of just opening the URLs that we store in user defaults, we read the bookmark data with a method like this. With that in place, we can run the app, import a folder, see the contents and close it. We run the app and we will still have access to those files. Like this, we managed to work with the files in place with the Mac app sandbox on. 
I decided to make this video as I struggled a bit to understand this model while developing my app. macOS development is similar enough to iOS development, but understanding the differences might be tricky at times. If you want to see more macOS development content, subscribe to my channel and comment what kind of content you are interested in watching. You can also check my snapshot testing with Xcode Cloud video next. Thanks for watching and until the next one.